Welcome to Liverpool Rumours 4th podcast, in which Benny Baller and Edo1 will be discussing the game against Arsenal. Edo1, how are you? Oh, I'm alright. I'm just looking forward to your joke of the day we're going to get at the end of it. It's a Benny Baller's joke of the week. It's a new feature we're going to be bringing in, and Ed is extremely uh-huh. excited. Oh yes, because I've heard your jokes, and you know, one of these days I'm sure it'll make me laugh. I've got a cracker lined up for you later. Can't be worse than the ones you were telling me, asking me, was this one okay? Well, maybe it's an age gap. Well, maybe you just can't tell jokes. I'm going to go with age gap. But back on topic, we've got a game to discuss. And that is Liverpool versus Arsenal away at the Emirates. Not a great record over there. So a point. How do we see that? You? Well, you've got to take it as a point gained on that basis. Though on the day, the way Arsenal played, especially in the first half, and they just couldn't get a pass together. Every pass was just given away by them. So you've got to say, we really should have been looking for three points there instead of time-wasting and settling for one. But the thing is, like you said, you know, it is a point gained. I mean, at the start of the game, seeing the negativity on the site, you'd be buzzing for a point. I think the thing is, the chances we had in the first half makes you think, oh, God, we could have had three. Should have had three, and it? Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, before the game, most of us would have been sat, settled for the point. But I wouldn't have been, you know, I don't think you're ever happy with a point. Settle for it, don't you? Yeah, no. Right, as I say, away at Arsenal, you got you got to settle for a point. It doesn't matter who you are. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. The difference is you're settling for a point rather than being happy with a point. You're only happy with a win, surely. Mm. And especially in these circumstances, or maybe it's just because I remember when we actually won things. That's that age gap again. Yeah, exactly. I was waiting for that. I thought I'd leave <laughs> you to get that little dig in. Well, you know, like, like, say, you, you know, you settle for a point. But uh, as I say, you, I think you can be happy with a point, um, especially after the second half coming under a lot of pressure. Uh, but I think, you know, if we didn't have them chances and Czech weren't in such fine form, and uh, you know, we didn't create anything and drew nil, 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 would you then be happy that we? You know, say we defended for 90 minutes and kept a clean sheet and got a point. Would you be happy in them terms? Can't, basically, no. what I'm saying is you can't be happy because we had chances to win it. No, I'm, what I'm not happy about is that we didn't win it. I'll never be happy with anything other than a win, let's be honest. You mm. settle for the point. You get it with a, with a defeat, but you're never happy unless you win, surely. Unless it's a draw that's enough, you know, the point's enough to give you the title. Mm. You can't be happy. It's just, you know, it's always too, it should always feel like two points dropped. Especially, I just, I didn't understand this time-wasting thing. I mean, it made no sense to me. Why was the goalkeeper time-wasting at every single goal kick? I know, it it wound me up. I mean, he lost me dream team points, so... Uh, yeah, I just don't get that. I mean, it just hands the initiative over to the opposition when you do things like that. For me, especially as in the field, you know, we showed that they were vulnerable at the back. Chambers was having an absolute mare. Mm. I would have liked to have seen his, go, you know, seen his go at him constantly. I think, uh, I think why we couldn't is because of the fitness of, uh, you know, Can and Firmino. I think were excellent and. Um, it's definitely somewhat different Firmino brings to a team with his hold up, and he, there was one ball over the top where he absolutely outpaced um, one of the centre backs, uh, or it might have been Monreal. Um, 
you know, so he's definitely somewhat different. And I, th- I think as him and Can tired, I think that's when Brendan sort of realised, right, we've huffed him, we've puffed him. You know, we had the chances, but we didn't get the goal. And now, now it's time to shut up. Shut up, shut up. Well, we'd already time wasted before, long before now. It was impressive for Minion, though. I've got to agree with you there. He, he looked totally different from what we've got. You know, a real live player. And mm. he created space for Coutinho, definitely. Because he was there, they couldn't just mark him out the game. Uh, you know, left him with a bit of space, Craig. It was good to see him back on the left, I always think. He definitely seems to play better when he's out on the left with freedom to put, you know, come inside on his right foot. Mm. Suits him. Definitely suits him. I think him and Benteke, you know, I'm watching them two very closely and the amount they're trying to set each other up and play each other through and, you know, offload into each other, I, I think there's a real partnership coming there. And Coutinho and Firmino seem to have a good understanding as well. You know, they seem to work together well. Do you think that's our best front three? Oh, well, I personally, I, if Stokesy was back there, I think he has to be playing. Definitely, play. but, um, you know, I guess you, if you, you got to go to a diamond then, surely. And that, you know, you can't have, unless you're playing Sturridge wide, which um, I think we all learned that we shouldn't. Because he, you know, he's deadly in the middle, and I could see. I saw a post about uh, the reference between Suarez and Sturridge, and you know that they think now it should be roles reversed. You know, it should be Benteke and Sturridge, but Sturridge being the one, you know, being the deadlier of the two. You know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it could work. Only one way to find out. Benteke keeps up his form he's got at the moment. It's definitely a threat. Mm. Yeah. I just think if um, if you got Ben Teke doing that, then flick ons into someone like Sturridge, who also can control the ball with his back to goal, and also can use pace to get behind. I think it's a lot more deadly than sort of a Coutinho run into the flick ons. You know. Well, yeah, at the moment, if Ben Teke is very isolated. Mm. That's what I liked about Firmino. He was looking to get around him when he could. There, there was. There was always... There, them two yes. were both beyond Benteke. They seem to start gambling now. I mean, it's taken three games, but I think he, Benteke won every aerial duel. I can't remember seeing him lose Manny, to be fair, since he's joined us. So I've got a, and I, I think that in the time I've watched him, when he's on, when he's on song, I should say, because there are times when you watch him, he doesn't even try in the past. He's done it for Belgium and Villa. But but when he's on his game, I don't, I'm don't. trying to think if I can remember him losing a header. And he just doesn't, really. When it's a straight fight for the ball, he's got pace and power and that, and he's starting to look good. So, yes. Quite pleased so far. He's just got to keep it up is the problem. It's only been three games, so... Mm. Yeah. What well, whilst we Whether are on just the... uh... Go on, mate. No problem. I was just saying what whilst we are on the th- front three, sort of before we move through the team, um I was just gonna talk about Ibe, obviously he come on on the right wing. Mm. Gave the ball away an awful lot. He wasn't having a good game. He's not had a good season so far, but I mean I think he's trying to hard myself. You know, he's trying too hard to do what he's been... He's been working really hard over the summer and stuff. I think maybe he just needs a... Uh, Calm down. You know, a, a rest. Take up the firing line for a bit. Have a break. Have a think about what you're doing. I'd like to see Tizera getting a few chances instead. Just to give Ibe a bit of a break and have a think about what he's doing and sit back. Though, on the other hand, I also want to see... You know, you want to see I build enough experience and just keep playing through it, even if he's having a bad game and see if he can work through it. Because mm. sometimes those bad patches are what makes you into a great player in the end, what you can learn in them. So that's a tough one. Hopefully the coaching staff together will be able to figure out what to do. You know, he definitely needs something. 
I don't mind him coming on and doing badly. that role. Obviously, we we saw you know with Moreno coming on the other side, we're obviously looking for a counter attack, and it, Moreno got away once. I remember, you know, um, poor final touch, final ball sort of thing. But then, uh, yeah, do you know you know the break on on about, yeah, you know that was a shame of you know, but uh, obviously that was a counter, you know, as a setup to stop the goals, you know, R- Rossiter. And Can Can was a sort of loud break, but Milner and Rossiter were forced to sort of shackle down. And you know, you know, even though we were under pressure, and they did get a few long shots off. But if you, you know, you're going to concede shots in a game. If you can make them long shots, you're better off. And I think it was set up really well, and it was set up well for a counter. And Marino just calmed down a tiny bit. We could have nicked that one nil in the second half. Yeah, he didn't look up at any point, did he? He was too busy sprinting and not looking. That's when you want a cool lad, when you want a, an experienced lad who takes the time to have a look round, you know, just realises you don't need to sprint flat out. You can just slow it up a bit and make the final ball count rather than just losing your head and just blasting it wildly. Mm. It's a shame because it looked a promising break, that's for sure. But there you go. They had their bad luck as well with the goal being disallowed and that. So they, one of those days, isn't it, on the goal front? I mean, I think, two posts did we hit? They had what eighteen shots or something? Yeah, I think we. I think the point is fair all round. I mean, they did dominate mm. second half, but then you know I, I've played in games myself where we know we're up against a very good possession side and I remember you know we got a lead we saw it, if Liverpool took their chances it would have been a brilliant game plan you know they still didn't change the game plan I think that's what Brendan was referring to I think there's always going to let Arsenal sort of uh, dictate in the second half I think like I say I think it was an explosive 45 where everyone gave everything to try and get a lead and we should have we didn't and, uh, you know, the game plan would, you know, if Benteke just puts that ball in, you know, he's got a massive net and he hits it. You know, I, I get everyone saying about it being a great save, but Benteke's got to do better for me there. He hits it at the keeper there. He, hit, yeah, he does. Right. He totally hits it at the keeper. And I don't get the rave. I mean, check has gone across the goal, made himself big, but um, I, I think Benteke's done the hard work for him. He shouldn't have been in a position. He shouldn't have been able to save it. That's the point there. Yeah. Yes, he's done well to spread himself and get in the position, but it shouldn't matter. Especially at the with the, the way Ben Tech has been playing, you would have fancied him really, to be honest, wouldn't you? I think he he thought it were a goal. I think that's the problem. Isn't the only one. <laughs> <laughs> he just relaxed too much. He thought yes, and uh, oh crap. You know, yeah, yeah, he could have put it higher. He could have put it, you know, a good three, four feet to the right. But uh, I would have liked seeing him lift it. You normally would. Just that roof was what it. Robbie Fowler was the master of, just lifting it over the keeper, just dinking it. Just a little lift. That's all you need. Because <laughs> um, you know the keeper's going to spread himself and he's going to go down. So yeah. Lift it. Little lift, or even just rifle it into the roof of the net. You know, from there, you should, uh, you know, thirty-two million pound worth of footballer. You can keep your shot down, but you know, lift it from a yard out. Um, that's our front three then. Uh, midfield. So let's start with. I'll save Lucas to last because, you know, <laughs> I think that's quite an obvious one. Uh, Milner, very good game. Do you think so? I'm not sure what he did. Oh, I did. Oh, definitely. He every time he picked up the ball, he relaxed. He relaxed the whole team. Took that extra yeah. touch and then moved it on. Even in his own box, I know there was that mix-up with Skirtle, but that's only yeah, because exactly. he fake shot, relaxed, and then Skirtle sort of. I think it more Skirtle's fault. I'm not just saying because I dislike no, Skirtle. No, I think that was fault. No, cause see, because Skirtle has his Milner's face in our own goal. That is why yeah. he left it for Skirtle to clear. Skirtle couldn't kick it because Milner was stood right in the way. And if he'd have hit it, it would have hit Milner. No, Milner backed off. Eventually, yeah. And that's when it was, you know, it was too late then. Possibly. 
six and a half a dozen as the other, or ever how the saying uh, goes. Just a confusion six. mix up. It happens, doesn't it? Yeah, these things happen, but you need to get the you know, the uh, communication better. But, see, I'll, but I still appreciate the touch Milner takes. I mean, it just shows composure. He's still trying to pass it out the back, and you know he's got the ability this to do time it. Time and a place to pass it out the back, and this is one of the things that annoys me with you know the setup we've had under Brendan Rodgers in the past is that they were doing that at the wrong time and place. There's a time and a place to have composure. There's a time and a place to just say get it into Rose Ed. Alan Hansen was a master at that. You know. He knew when it was time to play the ball and do a little dribble, and, and he also knew when it was time to just put it in the stand. But you the have pro- to learn these things. The problem with that is, though, you know, your Skirtles and Lovrens is, you know, ninety nine percent into the stands when end when under any danger. And it's just, I just think it's refreshing to see a composed player in and around the box, Lucas being the other, as well as Milner. <laughs> I'd agree if it wasn't that, like you said, you already pointed out he was facing his own goal. Yeah, you but don't take time no, he, he sort of settled the ball and then he used his body. Where anybody else is. So what you should be doing is just get it clear. Then you have, you know, then if somebody's coming onto the ball and they've got, you know, they can see the play in front of them, then you can take the chance. But when you're in the position he was in, he's running back towards goal, all he should have been doing is putting it wide, mm. getting it clear. You don't take a text there. Sorry, but that's just bad defending, rank bad defending, that is. And that was what, that's probably the worst thing. He, well, that I is his like only bad point mistakes. of the game. No, I don't like his... He's, making the wrong, he's constantly making the wrong runs. He should have been... I, I don't know whether this is under instruction or whether it's just him playing his game, but he's he's not. He should have been bursting into the box for a cross to be played in. You know what I mean? Yeah, but Cam That's was doing that. Doing. Cam wasn't, was it? Cam was nowhere to be seen either. Not yeah, he, he got forward a hell of a lot, Chan. Cam. Mm. I think. Yeah, but it's usually with the ball at his feet. He, he is some dribbler. I mean, when he like we t- we touched on him about getting up to speed, you know, like a tank, and uh, when he gets up to speed, he doesn't don't half shift. Yeah, he showed some nimble touches for a minute. I thought it was somebody else completely. You know, when you're thinking, oh, "Was a nice little turn?" You thinking, "Oh, that's Chad." Mm. It just looked too nimble for him. He is. So. Um, he's definitely going to be some player. Mm. Yeah, I hope he is as well. With us, I mean, I hope he does it with us. But yeah, he does look good. I liked him having, I think it helped a lot for the two, for Milner and Chan to have Lucas behind them as well. I think that really helped them because it gave them freedom to just roam. Well, that's what we were talking about, Milner and Henderson, you know, when after yeah, the exactly. first game being shackled because they need that CDM so they can have that bit of freedom. It definitely suits their game. Not it's being held back, it just—it's like half of their game gone missing. I was—I um, was thinking to myself earlier, and I know that's dangerous, but I don't sp- believe it. <laughs> the way Can dribbles with the ball, and the way Can wins his headers, and how technically superior Milner is to Henderson. Um, take the tinted glasses off. Does Can replace Henderson for the minute? Because what is Henderson offering the last few games? Yep, I'll hold my hands up, shoot me down, go for it. But I think I prefer Can and Milner after the display to what Henderson's been offering to the team. I think you'd have to be mad to change it after you know after the game. Unless they've played badly, you can't really change it. But But I'm not just saying it after the game, though, Ed. I think can offers more all round than Henderson. I can understand why you're saying it, but I don't agree. I would say, to be honest, for me, Milner's the odd one out, if anything. No, I, I think Henderson's I like offers more. He's quicker, stronger. 
fast. You know what I mean? He works harder. Mm. I, I, I'm slightly. I think Henderson's just a slightly better version of Milner. Only slightly. I think Milner's technically better. Milner does better. Mm. I don't think he is. Henderson's. A, the problem for me with Henderson is he, he's tackling. He's not got the same bravery. I think is the word I'm looking for. Really, mm. he doesn't have that. A Milner, you know, if it need if it comes down to it, and he needs to, he'll throw himself in where it hurts. As a Henderson, sometimes I feel he's a bit, you know, bit, tends to just try and stay on his feet a bit too much. Yeah, but he's definitely technically excellent. He just doesn't seem to be able to show it. He's got the skills, Hendo. You'd be surprised. No, I know. I, I know. I just think composure-wise and calmness-wise, I think maybe it's the age thing. You know, yeah, Milner's been doing practice. it for many a year, and he, he can Milner can have them extra couple of touches without panicking. He he seems really calm on the ball compared to Henson. Henson, everything it seems, you know, unless we're doing that silly keep the ball at the back. Um, in other positions up the, up the field, I think Henderson, everything's in fifth gear for him. But the thing is, if you're doing a you know a quick break or something like that, you need a player to be moving it quickly. Mm. And Milner takes too many touches for me. He doesn't do it quickly enough anymore. He's trying to be too composed and experienced, if you see what I mean. I disagree. Too calm. You, can, you know, sometimes you just, when you're attacking, you're on a fast break, you just need to get it in. But we've... Whereas it looked, I think we've lacked looked, a calm midfielder for a while. I mean, look at Lucas and Milner, you know, them two last night. I think they were just class. The calmness, the forward passing from them. Well, you know, we talked about Lucas. Every time he gets the ball, he goes forward. And, you know, we talked about it, so I'm keeping an eye on it. And it is every time. It was into Chan or into Coutinho, you know, from um, Lucas. Or Milner, if he's pushed on, it's always forwards. He'd, he'd it play one it. pass he played. I made a look at that. He made one pass sideways to Gomez, but after looking forward and nobody was showing, mm. he played the pass wide to Gomez. It was like an inch ahead of him. So, but out wide on the left in acres of space. So, but yeah, he does. He, his first thought is always look forward. And then, if there's nothing there, then he plays a pass. And that's what frustrates me about Henson. I, I think, you know, he only can pass the skirtle. Well, that, yeah, that, I know what you mean, but you've, I've seen him whip those 40-yard passes, cross-field ones that open up the play. And he can do the Gerrard-like passing. I, I think I prefer the Lucas-style passing, direct into feet. To your danger, man. Lucas ain't going to skin 11 players and pass the ball into net, but he knows who will. And he f- looks for them and plays it direct into their feet and says, right, you're the ball player, you you do something now. And I think I'd prefer that to Henderson's Hollywood passes. I'd prefer both, to be honest. A mix I think up. they're a good combination, yeah. But like Henderson, Milner, like I said, they're all they're both much of a muchness, so I'd not complain, but I do agree. I think it has to be one or the other. Both in the same team just just doesn't seem right to me. I just I, I can agree there, but I can also put to you that they've not done it together with a CDM yet. No, because one of them. So if, well, Henderson was always was the one that he was the CDM against team. Bournemouth, yeah. definitely. I mean, yeah. so we got to have a look at them to have a bit more freedom with, say, Lucas or. Can is not a CDM. What, what do you think on no. that? I don't think so. It'd be a hell of a waste. And we've got that Kiravella who's a CDM. He played CDM before we bought him mm. in Valencia. He's always known as a central defensive midfielder. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing him get a couple of runs out as well. But Lucas has to start the next game. Yeah, well, I don't so. Is he going to be here? Going... I don't know. I mean, you watch him wave when he goes off, and it does it does kind of smack of a guy to go in, but he does love Liverpool, and, you know, the club doesn't want him to go. It's not like we're forcing him out or anything. 
it's just I don't know. I mean, the offers are there on the table for him. So it's going to be a personal choice, isn't it? And who, who can tell? Mm. Other than him, and he might not even know yet. He might want to see how next week goes. He, he may think to himself, he, he's not daft. He's a footballer. We watched the game. He played in the game. He knows he had a good game, you know. And his teammates be saying how well he did and that and that. And now if he goes in, you know, I think, you know, he, all he wants to do is play. If he gets dropped next weekend now, I think that'll, that'll be it for him. But if he starts and he has another good performance... You know, and he makes himself undroppable. I can see him staying. Yeah, well, every time he's got in, he's managed a good run of games in the past. It's injury that's always got in, the yeah. issue, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, hopefully that won't happen this time. Well, quote, quote me on it then. If he if he doesn't start next week, he's off. And if he starts next week, he stays. Quote me on that. That's how I think his mind's going to work. He's not daft. Yeah, he knows he has a good game. And he knows if he gets dropped after having such a good game, he'll think, well, what the hell have I got to do? Yeah, exactly. If you drop him now, then he's going to. you'd have to be mad to stay in his position. Mm. You, you can't see him being dropped. I mean, he played well. And the team looked better for it. Mind you, just thinking about it, Ed, when's the transfer window up? It's six days, isn't it, left? Monday, close so, September the first, isn't it? So that, yeah, so that that's Tuesday. That's going to be interesting then. So, who are we playing at the weekend? It is. Oh, oh God, I've forgotten. Oh God, God, I've gone blank. I'm going to have to bloody. How can I not remember? We're at home, aren't we? Again. Oh. I'm on it. I'm on it. Don't worry. <laughs> Top professionalism, top professionalism <laughs> as always from the NL1. Yeah. Home to West Ham. Ham. There yeah. you go, Jinx That's personal padlock. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so he and you know you, you're at home. Henderson, what's the latest? You got any info on that? It looks like it looks like he'll be out for a bit. Yeah. Right, so Henderson Lucas. Last that is. <laughs> You start the same team, surely, then? Well, that's what you'd think. Because, I mean, you don't want to break up the defence. They're playing well. Even if I'm still not convinced by them. <laughs> they're not, you know, you can't drop them when they're not conceding. You just have to hope they, that they, the momentum builds and they start getting it together a bit more. Confidence grows, etc. Yeah, you have to stick with them. So. And we looked at, like, when you just look at that team, they played really well. There was good balance. There was some signs of a link-up forming at the front. I think that's the key word, balance. It looks so much... People knew what they were to do. They knew their roles. And they looked like they were enjoying their roles. Lucas was enjoying putting in the tackles and cutting out interceptions and can look enjoyed on them runs and Milner enjoyed mixing it up doing both and uh, you know and the think... thing I'd like to have seen the thing I was saying about Milner though is what I'd like to have seen him do more is down the left that's the problem I was thinking is what I was trying to say is down he's the making left. these runs down the right but we've got Klein who can do the job down the right perfectly fine get forward and support the attack perfectly fine he's, he's excellent going you want him to help Gomez a bit not defensively, but offensively. Gomez is. I agree right because he's right footed. Very little he does, he yeah. When, when he gets so high, he has to cut back onto his right foot, and yeah, it and stops the momentum. Yeah, and it's putting it into a wrong place for Benteke to attack as well. Mm. He wants it curling outwards towards him, so he can just put his head on it. And it's you know when he's cutting back on his right, it's given the defence time to set itself and. Totally agree. Yeah, it just doesn't work. That's why. That's what I was trying to say. You know about Milner when we were talking about him. I'd like to have seen him instead of keep concentrating on the right, which I don't know whether he's been ordered to do that and it's part of his instructions, or whether he's choosing to do that because he does seem to have a fairly free role. Mm. But if you watch him in both game, in, oh sorry, both games, it's 
three games is more than both. Like in the three games so far, he's mostly concentrated on the right hand side. So I'm beginning, to, you know, I do think it must be an instruction he's been given. But I would like to see him operate more freedom and support Gomez down the left and get a few balls in from the left because he's probably the well. I mean, who else have we got who can cross a ball with his left? Mm. In the team, I mean, no one. Did we? Do we have any left footers? That's why I was just trying to think. Have we got a left footer? In no, the we team? don't. I think I was watching the game with my brother again, and yeah, I think I said to him, "There's no left footers." And he goes, Lovren's a left footer. And I was like, Lee, no, he's not. No, he's right footed. He can use his left, but he's right footed. He is definitely right footed. So any posters that keep saying he's left footed, please stop. Yeah, he's left sided, but he's he's, he's definitely right footed. That's it. And that's why when we bought him, I thought he'd go the right side of Sacco. That's what I thought the plan was. I think pretty much everyone did, but Mm. it wasn't to be. To be. Right, yeah, we touch on the full-backs. Yeah, that's it. We touch on the full-backs. I've got to say, a lot of people going on about Gomez, and yep, yeah, rightly so, but my man of the match was Nathaniel Klein. I thought he to was be, outstanding. To be fair with Gomez, he didn't exactly have a lot up against him because um, Ramsey was playing on the right-hand side and he was constantly drifting inside. And looking to exploit the space uh, Skirtle was leaving when he dropped off. So, you know, saying Gomez played well, I think he, he had it fairly easy for most of the game. It was only when the substitutions changed that he struck, you know, that he had somebody up against him, really. And I don't think he did. Yeah, he did okay against Oxley Chamberlain, but you know, it wasn't like as great a game as people seem to be making out, in my opinion. Because he didn't offer us enough going forward. As for Klein, I don't know why you're raving about him either. Are you joking? Oh, it he, he wasn't bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he had a bad game. I think but... he was awesome. Every break, the man was on his bike up the side. But Is then he, he was what? always back in position to deal. He did, what, what did Sanchez do? Nothing all game the, because of Klein. What, he was quite a few times he allowed himself to be dragged out of position, and people were complaining Ibe wasn't back. And Ibe didn't know where he was meant to be because he was isolated. And there was times when Klein had been dragged right across in the middle. He's behind both centre backs in the middle of the goal area, and Ibe's on his own with three players up against him, three Arsenal players, and people are complaining about Ibe, and I'm thinking. Kept a clean sheet, you know, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah, so Klein was doing the right things. <laughs> well, no, it's not so much about how I, I, well Klein played. I think his overall, no, his overall game, Klein was phenomenal. His tackles were phenomenal. He knew when to clear, when to pass out. He supported every attack possible. Um, oh, you know, he just... Are they, did you not notice it? Ozil was coming out, Ozil, Ozil kept coming out to the left. Then Sanchez was coming out to the left. Even for a little bit, Ramsey was coming out to the left. Because none of them wanted to go up against Klein. Um, I think you're getting mistaken there. They went out to the Arsenal left yeah, because they... they were going up against Klein. What do you mean held up against Klein? They were going up against Klein. They were yeah. moving to the Arsenal left to go up against No, Klein. they were coming away to go <laughs> and chucking someone else out to their left. And no one fancies going again. against Klein. I think you need to watch it again because uh, Firmino had to keep chasing back and helping him out. That's why he was knackered. Mm. I don't know. I think I don't think that's Klein's fault. That's why I'm saying I don't think he had a bad game as such because when you watch it, I think he was left isolated against, like you said, Ramsey kept coming out there to use the space. Skirtle was leaving behind where he dropped deep. Um, Ozil was was also moving out there, and Sanchez was there. And I think Klein was I think did struggle at times against, because, but not because he was bad, but because he was just being overloaded. And he got, you know, he was chasing runners in field mm. at times when he should have been passing them over. That was what my main issue with him was. You, you try and it's pass over a running man to Skirtle, you know. Well, you know, that's why Lucas has been brought in. 
is to fill the spaces and fill the pockets and help you know help cover the gap. He well, doesn't need to. Run Lucas in. spent most of his time on the edge of our box, though. Which I like because yeah, exactly. every time they know Arsenal keep it on the edge of the box and they were moving it around our box and you'd have Lucas out and press and can out and press sort of out there Milner and I, you know it looked a really good setup and I, I just think you know I think uh, Klein will be our best sign in this summer I think he it's uh, we, you know how we talked in the first podcast about buying the complete player the ready made player I think that's Klein and he can only get better as well with the uh, experience and maturity. He's certainly not had a bad game. Not had a bad game yet. Played well. But I don't think he was as good as you're making out. That's what I'm saying. I do. I think. I, I genuinely think you were. I don't know. Let's so, move on. Uh, let's get I to. I don't know who I'd say was man of the match, though, thinking about it. I think it was all a bit. It was Benteke, Lucas, good, or Klein, great. I think. I don't think anybody had a particularly outstanding game now. Maybe Coutinho. Coutinho? Yeah. I think Benteke did more. Lucas did more. Klein and Gomez did more than Coutinho this time. I don't know. I think Coutinho was the one that scared them. Mm. He scares everyone. I mean, his ball control is deadly. Yeah, he, he did some good. He did some good stuff. I think he's the main difference between us. This, you know, the main difference between us getting a top four place and not getting one is how he plays this season. Mm. We need him to be on form. And this uh, brings us to Mignolet then. Good, get the excellent save from Giroud that um, seems to have been swept under the carpet. You know, where he, he, he sort did... of fell over as he kicked it. He had some. He did some good things, but I still crosses and you know one corners. cross, one cross he didn't get, but he crosses did enough. Crosses and corners, he's still flapping. He did he's enough, didn't he? Oh well, you can't because he never had much. He didn't have a lot to deal with, to be fair. So it's difficult to judge him. I mean, the, the, you know, there was only the one flap, and you know. Um, I am a goalkeeper myself. It is hard. You you know, sometimes you've come. And as we talked about uh, the Bournemouth game where he'd come and then hesitated and stopped and was in no man's land. You know, so wouldn't you rather yeah, him come and make size. it difficult than just hesitate? But I'd rather... I just watch him and I just think sometimes he's just doing the... You know, his decision-making still not quite there when it comes to the crossing. Hopefully he can improve on that. And his kicking, I mean, he only really had one kick, so to be mentioned, and that's the one to Gomez where he played him into trouble. Mm. That was an awful pass, awful pass. So, But if that's the worst you do in a game, you're not complaining, are you? If, you, if he's had one flap and one bad pass, can't really complain at that. That's it. He was, um, you know, in his shot stopping... You know, oh, that save from um, Giroud. You know, where they're screaming for a penalty where he turns and falls over himself. and Yeah. And, and Mignolet puts that big right hand out to his side. Yeah. I, it was a good save, yeah. Nice. I think you're getting a bit carried away about it being excellent now. It's a, why, why can't you give Mignolet some praise? No, I, I no, come on, give it, say something game. good. Say something nicer. Said, the worst he did was that he's had a good game. He's kept it clean sheet, but I just still don't... He still doesn't... I'm still not confident in him. I like Mignolet, to be honest. I think he's young, hell of a shot stopper. And at least he's stopped the hesitation, you know, whether he flaps or not. At least he's made up his mind. He's determined to come and get it. You know, that's half the problem. You know, as soon as you start catching a couple, it does the goalkeeper's mental mentalness a world of good. Mentalness, is that a word? No. Mentality. Mentality is what I was looking for. Thank you. Um, I'd rather he just punched it clear, though, than tried to catch it. But what I'm saying is, you know, as a, as a goalkeeper, you catch not- one... And, you know, it's a world of confidence. You wouldn't believe how it affects you. You just can't come and pluck one out of the air. It, you know, the first one in a game or something, it, 
the way it builds you, it can set you up for the next week. You know, having a good aerial game. In a, but uh, if you do start hesitating and mixing up, it does play on your mind. I'd, you know, and I, I'm just glad he's making up his mind. Whether he's flapping or catching or punching, I'm just glad he's being more decisive and having the courage to come out into the box. I mean, it's a, you know, I, I know they're professionals on a lot of money, but it is scary coming out and putting your hands up and leaving your ribs unprotected to some people the size of Ben Teke and things. You know, it, it is scary. So I'm just happy for now that he's being more decisive and coming either way, you know? Well, I just think that's what he should be doing. If he's not able, if he's not got the balls to do that, then you just wonder why he's a goalkeeper in the first place now. I, mean. I know you're saying it's scary, but I'm sorry, but you wouldn't be getting into it if you weren't. You shouldn't be at this level at all if you're not up to that kind of challenge. No, to- I totally agree. But, you know, it's still, still in everyone's mindset, you know, no one wants to hurt themselves, you know, at the end of the day. And I'm just glad he's doing it. So it's it's not that easy to come and get a fist on the ball. It's not that easy to catch a ball with bodies around us. He's got to make, you know, if you can't do any of that, you've got to make it hard for him. And, and that not think, flap, he, he made it hard for him. Do you not think that it was more that the the main difference is not really him, but the set-piece defending, how we've improved that. We've tightened up a hell of a lot. We look a lot more organised at the back. We do. And I, I think Ben Teke's aerial ability helps there. Oh, I mean, yeah. there was one where he just absolutely rifled a headed clearance and chased it out himself. That helps no end. Well, it helps just having him in there because they've got to look to avoid him. Mm. You know, what I mean? you can see them. They're all they're trying to aim it away from where he is, which means that whoever he's marking is pretty much useless, which is a big help. Definitely. I mean, he he's what we wanted from Andy Carroll, isn't he? Which we never got. You mean somebody who could actually turn up on the pitch week in, week out? <laughs> and and actually play drunk. football. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't drunk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I, I'm, I'm really happy with Ben Tecker right now. We're happy with the performance. We're, you know, we're sort of, we're not happy, but we'll settle for the result. You should only be happy if you win, as you say. Um, we're up to 42 minutes. Is there anything the else you want to touch on? The important thing I've got to say is that we look better. That's it. That's the thing is making progress. That's all you can ask is you can't, have, you can't expect it to be perfect every week. What you're looking for is to make progress week on week. Mm. If we can just keep improving the performances each week, then, oh, you know, this, there's nothing stopping us, is there? But just have to keep doing that now. That's it. So we're hoping for the same lineup next week uh, against West Ham at home. Um, that's it. I mean, as you say, positive signs. You know, a bit more upbeat on the site this week. That's good to see. Uh, still, the negative mongers lurking, but um, the general I consensus is good. Though, to be fair, because it's still not. We're still not playing brilliant. You know, but, it wasn't like you could sit there and say it was a fantastic performance. It wasn't a fantastic Ed, performance. Ed, how if, many... What was the score? Hadn't given, yeah, but if Arsenal hadn't given the ball away every time they had it, which is the only reason we kept, we did so well in the first half, to be fair, is that they were awful. Every pass they made went to one of our players. Because they were under changed. pressure. It, was, it wasn't, though. Captain Chambers had no pressure we on him. We dominated space, all, as Brendan said. We didn't press the ball, but we pressed the space. And yeah, but we filled the gaps well. Yeah, but that doesn't stop you. That doesn't make you give it away. If if they're filling the gaps, then the man's free. Think of how many interceptions yeah. our front line made. Yeah, but that was interceptions because the passes were so bad. I mean, you saw every single pass was a terrible pass. We were having a, They were having a disaster, I mean, on the pass. They weren't Callum brilliant, but I think we, we helped. He, just, he, wasn't, he wasn't settled in. And he completely blocked, bottled it in the first half. It took him a while to settle in. So you can't really say that that we were brilliant. So I could understand why some people are still worried. All I'll but say I is, what was the score at the Emirates last season, Ed? 
Yeah, but that's not what we're I'm just asking we're a question. At I'm just asking a question. <laughs> yeah, but the point is... You want improvement? improvement game on game? Yes, we are. Right. Are that's we making important. an improvement on previous results in the same fixtures? Seasons. You know, it's a different season. You can't keep looking back on that and comparing it to this, really. You should be looking at what's happened the previous week and trying to improve on that. And that's what you want. The, the coaching staff should be looking at what happened last week and com- and improving on it, not looking at what happened last season because it's a completely different team. I know, but it shows that this team has improved. Well, hopefully. No, we should be getting more points than last season. That's what we aim. That's what you've got to aim and for. That's it. And, uh, you know, Stoke away, Arsenal away. Games, we conceded uh, nine goals in last year. We conceded zero this time. So that is definitely improvement. Week on week, we are improving. It was a bigger improvement than the improvement from the first to the second game. So that's encouraging. Key thing now, please play a same... Brendan, we know you're listening. Please play the same team and see what they can do. Please. You know, I know you're listening. Get down to more games as well. It was nice going to the uh, Arsenal game the other day. Not Arsenal. What, which game was it? Man City game you went to? Man City, yeah, Chelsea. Man City. You know, so we appreciate that. It's not going unnoticed. You know, the posters are giving you some slack now, Brendan. Do the right thing. Play the same team. Have you got a message for Brendan, Ed? No, I'm just waiting for your joke of the week now. This is the important thing. Joke of the week. Okay, let me do my jingle. Yeah. It's time for Benny Baller's joke of the week. Oh, God. Okay, I'm just going to say my joke, and then I'm just going to end the podcast, okay? Oh, <laughs> Right, Ed. Like most people my age, I'm 24. Thanks for listening. Cheers.